let's talk a little bit about Abyssal Maze. So I've got 54% damage reductions, which is 6 level 6 blue stones in currently, and that's definitely helping uh, build up the early levels. Definitely try and keep moving. So if you stay in one spot just trying to kill one thing at once, it's definitely going to be a lot harder, you're running out of time, and yeah. In these early waves, I definitely suggest trying to build distance and death strike. And then focus more on your attack speed, ricochet, things like that later on. You just want to try and kill as much as you can, as quick as you can. And in this instance, I'm with someone who's playing Dragonite, I believe. So they're currently running damage reduction. So my job in this wave is to just purely stack the boss up a bit, which... I'm always happy to get it early, start getting some damage. I might lose a stack occasionally, but running around and get some levels while it follows. And yeah, if you keep doing this, eventually it'll go. And if I start stacking this boss up, the poison stack will go up. Eventually this guy told me to stop attacking. I'll run off and his damage reduction will just absolutely smack it dead. One of the important things to remember as well is in between the waves, um, make sure you're taking note of what each wave is. So for instance, wave two is no any healing and monsters are immune to its either fire or poison. It changes depending on the wave. Wave five, for instance, I believe is monsters are immune to weakness. However, weakness will still apply to the boss. As you saw, I stopped attacking when he ass ran off and his damage reduction smacked it dead. So wave two, no any healing. Trying death strike and distance is really important early on just to try and be able to kill things, leave those tentacles behind and have them following. And just try and not lose too much health straight away. So you will probably die a couple of times in these no healing waves, that's normal. I've seen plenty of people in full Mythic do it as well, and yeah, it's just part of getting those early levels up. The higher you get, the easier it becomes, and that more uh, damage reduction and health comes together to just give you a bit more livability. So again, just running around quickly, just trying to stack up as much XP as we can early waves. These lava rooms are really handy for kiting the boss around. So once you get your levels up, and especially in these where you don't want to be getting hit, uh, get a bit of distance, and because he can't run across the lava, he has to go across the walkways, you can just make him run from one side to the other continuously and start getting those stacks up there. It's definitely worthwhile and definitely helpful having uh, a few awakened characters. Once you start getting about 10, you start getting a pretty good rate, I find, of starting to get some uh, decent selections starting to appear. But even if you can't awaken that many, if you try and get quite a few characters, especially things like uh, with damage, uh, damage reflection, sorry, uh, turtle, engineer, things like that, and get them to level 10, try and build them up as a bit of a tank with damage reduction and damage reflect. I know that sounds a bit silly, but with the boss in here and the weakness that he puts on you, that means you can just stand there and reflect more damage with that uh, damage reflection. It really comes in handy to just get that bit of extra stack and get him burnt down faster. So as you can see in this one, with the no any healing, we're both just going to keep kiting him around here and make him follow us where he can't hit us and just keep that poison stack on until he dies. Keeps it really simple. And then wave 3 is another healing wave. So 1, 3 and 5 you can all heal on, but 2 and 4 are no any healing. So this time I'm going to go Ripper and I'm just going to give him the support again. And so again, just early waves, try and get some levels up. Unfortunately with Ripper early on it's a little bit more difficult to take on entire rooms until I get that first couple of weaknesses. But then, same thing, just run around, grab a heap together, and with a 54% damage reduction, once I hit about level 14 and get about 6 or 7 seconds of weakness, I find I can normally just sit there and keep weakness on the boss and keep 
uh, just staying alive pretty much. So I can just stand still and my boss can just hit me soon. And then he can just focus on putting the damage on at that point. And he's got damage reduction as well, it seems. So as you can see here, I'll just take the hits and I'm not even losing health at this point. And now he can just run in, get a bit of extra experience for himself and do the same. Makes it really quick, really easy. And yeah, just communicate with your partner in Abyssal to see what they're going to go and what you can do to help out. So again, here I've got Protector, so I'll be supporting. And he just has to choose his character. So things like uh, Awaken Protector only has one second of weakness. So you don't want to go things like Void Knight that's going to have uh, two or three seconds of weakness if I've got this because otherwise it'll be flicking it back to one second all the time. So if you got Void Knight in there, don't do it with a Protector or another weakness character. Wait until uh, they're going something with more damage and if they're doing a support character, a weakness character or a slow character, try and grab something where you can be doing all the DPS or majority of the DPS while they control the boss and make it manageable. Same as always, so this is no any healing again, which is really handy for Protector, being able to just gather them all up and put down the uh, bubbles to slow them down and weaken them at the same time. So when I do take those occasional hits, I don't take as much damage. So I'm also getting more of that distance and damage reduction with the improved zone, and that'll just help control everything and slow it down. So same thing again, when we get onto the boss here, I'll be making it follow me around and placing these bubbles down so it runs slow and that'll give my teammate a chance to go in and start doing the damage and he can really get that stacked up. And my job here is to just try and keep him alive and keep the boss slow, weak and following me as much as possible. So now that he's with me, as you can see, we're both here side by side, so. He'll do that again once he gets his level ups and we'll just stay in the lava rooms and just kite him around in circles. Keep him a weakness on. He's bringing in a little bit more XP and it's all about Abyssal is really about working together unless you're in full mythic with multiple loadout sets and you can solo every wave and yeah, it's pretty much about teamwork this mode. And again, so he's just getting those extra levels, extra bit of experience. I'm just keeping the stack on, keeping the poison up. And so Anubis isn't a character with damage reflex, so it's fine for me to just keep attacking it and keeping the stack on. So he's just going to keep running in and being in any healing wave. He will die a few times as he comes in here. And he'll just keep running in and I'll just keep getting that poison stack higher. So the higher I get the poison stack each time he runs in with that damage... He'll be doing more each time. And so again, just making him follow me. So these lava rooms are kind of important to remember. So here we go, wave five, uh, immune to weakness, the monsters. So I got Mummy here, and Mummy is a great character if you know how to use it. So he's going to... He can up here for me, and his job is to get the stack on. And once there's enough stack on the boss, then I'll go in there and I'll be doing the damage. And while I do that, he'll stop attacking. So once he gets a few thousand stack of damage on after we level up, it'll be my job as mummy to then go in and use that poison stack that's built up to use these sorrow auras to burn him down pretty quickly. So again, just getting sorrow or as much as possible and damage reduction so I can stay alive. Makes it really easy with mummy at that point, especially with the 54%, that's just adding on. So I can just run around here and by this point, I'm pretty much just yeah, able to kill anything. Get a bit more sorrow or he's bunching it up and when there's a big line of enemies, I'll just come through and run through them all. So make sure... If you are playing mummy, that you're not just standing on the spot and biting the boss nonstop, because uh, that won't do anything. The sorrow aura is all about running through it. So once he gets the stack on and we're ready to go, as you see, I won't even worry about the dash. I'll just be running backwards and forwards. So here we go. 
He's starting to put stack on, and I'll just run backwards and forwards. So I'm staying alive, still hitting some of that XP along the way. He's building that stack up, so it'll take a little bit. Once he gets that stack up high enough now, you can see that he's got there. He's backed off, and I'll just keep running backwards and forwards with the Sorrow War. And that easy.